Later on, in further down, the shoulder draws over. Today, we're going to take a look at how to build bigger, rounder, meatier shoulders. So when we all hit the gym, one of those iconic body parts is the shoulder. It's the part that we all crave because it helps create that V taper. It helps fill up your sweatshirts, your t-shirts, so that you look better in a vest. But it's also one of the worst worked, in my opinion, for the fact that people tend to overwork certain areas and underwork others. And as a result, end up with a very lopsided, kind of pronated, lacking shoulder development. So today we're gonna to take a look at the front, middle, and rear, so that you've got that big, thick, full looking shoulder that will stick with you for years. So it's called the delt, that's the front, we're going to call it the front delt. So we're going to be working on the front head of the shoulder and a great one for this obviously as we all know is a pressing motion. Compound standard for this is the overhead press with the bar. A lot of us neglect this because we get so focused on dumbbells but there are a few intricate little things that you need to do to make sure that you're getting the maximum from this exercise and minimum risk. One of the main problems with this is body posture. A lot of people think about working the shoulders and then forget about the rest of the body. We need to stabilize the foundation upon which we're pressing, and that's from our feet all the way up to our shoulders. So you want to be hip width apart with soft knees. You want to engage your glutes a little bit. That's going to control your hips. From there, we're going to pull our core in. We're not going to tense it tight, but we're going to control it. We're going to pull it in so it's controlled, and then that's going to stabilize all our midsection. From there, we're going to grip just over shoulder width apart, keeping the elbows nice and tight. Shoulders are going to be held back but not squeezing. So you're engaging the scapula, but maintaining a good posture. So I'm relaxed here, I can move. It's not like bench press where you're rolling back. Just engage them. From here, what we're gonna do is come under the bar and lift up. We're gonna need to clear our head out of the way. So as you drive up, what you're gonna need to do is put the head back. Then as it clears the head, you're gonna bring the head back in straight line and then press up and over. So now we're kind of linear from bar all the way down to our feet. The bar's not too far behind us and it's not too far in front of us. This is a stable way of doing things, clearing the head in and out of the way. So as it comes back down, you clear the head out, keeping those elbows nice and tight, then drive back up and through. What a lot of people tend to do on this, which is a problem, is they tend to start overly arched to get their head out of the way and they keep it out of the way the entire time. This is going to put a lot of stress on that lower lumbar. It's going to also make you very unstable and it's going to risk wobbles. Wobbles can lead to injuries. So we want to avoid tweaks, we want to avoid injuries and we do that by setting things correctly and sticking with them throughout each movement. So treat each rep individually, make sure that you are thinking about the mind to muscle, make sure that you are not excessively moving any part of the body that doesn't need to be moving other than the shoulder joints. So with the overhead press, this is a compound movement, this is where you're going to get some weight on there. But if you're not used to doing this, start light, go slow, fight the negatives. You're going to feel all this on the front head of the delt, it's going to be very focused, but it's also going to be very taxing on the cardio, on your breathing. So relax, press, and I promise you, over time you'll see progression, increase in strength, increase in growth, and increase in stability. So the next move I'm going to show you, I'm going to do this standing, but you can also do this seated if you find it a little unstable. But again, we want to try and work as much of the body as possible. So standing if you can, and this is the Arnold Press. This is fantastic because not only does it help hit that front head of the delt, but it also helps open up the scapula and that range of movement. So again, we're looking here for control and technique. So what is an Arnold press? It's a variation on the shoulder press that requires a lot more movement. It starts from the front with the dumbbells facing each other, elbows tight. From here you're going to roll out, open up that scapula nice and wide with the elbows and then drive through as standard with a press. Then you come back down to that start position for the press and then roll the dumbbells back round. So in one single flowing motion we end up with what is called the Arnold press. The reason this is so great is because as we're rolling those elbows out, we're helping to expand the range of motion of the scapula. So a lot of people can end up with an impinged scapula, traps getting caught up. If you have a shoulder that's a little bit higher than the other, you've got imbalances, this is a really great way of opening up the body and controlling that motion of the shoulder. Plus, with that press motion, it's also going to hit the front head of the delt just as before. So as I said, standing or seated, this is a great, great exercise. Things to focus on here are making sure that you bring the elbows all the way back round to the front and get that full range of motion. Get a full turnout so the elbows are nice and wide. Then you're going to drive up without arching that lower back, 
keep the glutes engaged to control the hips, drive through the feet and press, making sure to not allow the shoulders to rise up or down, keeping them engaged with the scapula. As with anything, start with the lighter weights. You're gonna be aiming for that kind of six to 10 rep range. As you progress over time, you'll find that you'll get stronger, you'll require more weight, but do not think that more weight means more muscle. It's not the case. Especially with something as technical as this, start light, control it, keep the movement nice and slow, fight that negative and don't rush it. So now we're going to concentrate on that lateral head of the shoulder and with that comes lateral raises. This is one that often is done very, very wrong. Make sure to check my previous video if you haven't. Also guys, if you like the video so far, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of these uploads. But let's get back to this lateral raise. We want to be thinking about lifting from the elbow. Again, everything, every time when we're standing from the feet all the way up, we set ourselves soft knees, glutes slightly engaged, core controlled. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to move out, elbows to the side, arms slightly in front. So what we're not doing is coming straight out to the side slightly in front with a bent arm that's going to make sure the leverage point is the shoulder from there lift from the elbows dumbbell will be slightly lower than the shoulder and the elbows as so and you can see the finishing point dumbbell is slightly lower not up here here this keeps the leverage point on that shoulder slow controlled fight the negative avoid pigeon necking relax your traps to relax your traps relax your neck that's as simple as these can be made. It's a light exercise. Don't try and go too heavy, because then all you end up doing is shrugs. So another variation for this is, especially if you find that you've got a little bit of pain in those shoulders and things, this is a great way of alleviating that. Plus, you can do this version a little bit more straight-armed. Find anything that you can kind of hang your body weight off that's gonna be very stable and make sure it's not gonna tip when you do so. You're gonna fully extend the balancing arm. You're gonna lean in with your feet so the whole body is now at an angle. I'm quite relaxed here, but what I'm also doing is making sure that I'm engaged from my feet up, so I'm keeping those hips forward, controlling my core. From here, I'm simply gonna lift out and up to a straight point. But effectively, if I stand up straight now, you can see it's still actually at an angle. So we're keeping the load on the shoulder, lifting up to shoulder height, straight arm out, to the side. You're gonna repeat this. Again, we're looking for that six to 10 rep range. So you can do a little bit of pausing at the top, delayed negatives, don't try and go too heavy. Once you've done one arm, move on to the next, but then straight back to the other arm. If you're doing individual arms at a time, you don't need those rest periods. So move from one to the other, keep the focus, keep the blood flowing. Again, it's light, six to 10 reps, a really nice movement, especially if you've got any shoulder twinges. There we go, we've covered some of the, the good front and medial exercises, but we're not done. And this is where most people are done. And that is because we need to hit that rear delt. And this is the one that gives you that side depth. This is the one that when people look at your shoulders, they think you have a big shoulder because you have this big head here, this rear delt head. So that when we get that pose from the side, you can see it pop right here. So it's so vitally important. Like having big arms, you need big triceps to have big shoulders. You need those big rear delts. And the problem with that is a lot of people know the exercises they should be doing, but in order to hit them properly, to make them hit that muscle, you have to be very, very technical. And we're gonna cover that now so that you can go forward, making sure that you are getting everything out of the effort you are putting into hitting these rear delts. We're gonna look at two of them and these are the cable-based movements. The reason I want to go through these is because they're the easiest ones to control and get used to this movement on. Later on in other shoulder tutorials, we will cover some more variations that you can use with dumbbells, but there's also a video already up on shoulder workouts, so make sure to check that back on the channel and it shows a movement called the W-Y-I. So check that video out, I'll link that in the description because that is a very good one, especially if you have scapular issues. But for now, we're gonna concentrate on two pulling motions on the cables. The one that you will know, and that's the face pull. And this is where you're using a rope and you're gonna pull it through to your face and squeeze those delts to the back. The problem here is a lot of people just end up pulling through and what they're actually working is kind of the traps and a bit of their back. We have to think about this as almost a rear double bicep. So what we're trying to hit here is you see this kind of bare claw here that we get at the back of the shoulder. That's what we're trying to bite. You're trying to feel it right here. So as we come back, what we want to do is pull the ropes here and then we're gonna push our knuckles back and over the top. That's gonna to help us really bite down on those rear delts. You also have to think about relaxing the traps and to do that, you need to relax the neck. So relax the neck, pull through with the knuckles and 
squeeze them over the top. So you can see it's almost like a rear double bicep that we're trying to do, but we're not contracting the biceps. We're trying to keep all this relaxed. Think of the arm as a meat hook at this point. From there, there's two ways that you can go back on the negative. You can go back keeping the scapula engaged, or you can release the scapula. Now, releasing the scapula is more technical because it means you're gonna have to return the scapula to an engaged position prior to squeezing back. So keeping the scapula engaged as we come back, you wanna roll it and squeeze, and then don't let that shoulder move forward. If we release, prior to pulling, we want to re-engage the scapula and then follow through with the pull. So to start with, do it as a double motion, scapula, pull. But by the time you get good at it, you should just be a flowing motion all the way through. So that is the face pull. It's a complicated exercise, even though it looks simple, but try and feel those bite points. That's what's gonna be important. So if you have a spotter, if you have a partner, get them to put their fingers right here and think about where you should be contracting and start creating that mind to muscle. Next up on the cables is the rear delt fly. So this uses both sides of the cables. But there's a little tip here that I'm gonna give you that's gonna help you engage that much easier. And that's not using handles, but using the balls on the ends of the cables themselves. And instead of having this overhand grip that a lot of people tend to have where they're pulling around, we're gonna use okay fingers. So like if you're diving under sea and you give that okay sign, you're gonna allow the ball from the cable to sit in that okay grip. Obviously the cables are gonna cross in front of you. And from here, you're gonna pull back from the elbows and squeeze, keeping those okay fingers. The reason this works is because it stops you thinking about pulling from the hands and allows you to concentrate on pulling from the elbows. It also stops you using too much of a heavy weight. And in turn, what you're gonna be able to do is again, work on that mind to muscle connection. This is a really, really nice motion, but a couple of the areas that people do on it as well are allow the elbows to dip, so they end up pulling from top to low. We wanna avoid that, we wanna try and pull around in an arced motion. And that's kind of it. If you get all those right, you should feel this really bite down on that rear delt. And by the time you're finished, when you look to the side in the mirror, you should see a really nice big pump on that rear delt. And on those back biceps, you'll get that nice little bear claw. Wah! That's how you make a brew look really good. Whew. You have the details to set yourself up for a very solid full delt workout to help develop that round, thick looking muscular shoulder. And as I've said, remember, it's always about that balance from front to back. That's what gives that illusion of size. Remember, it's the details that create these illusions. And a lot of times when you're seeing people who you think are kind of big mass monsters or massively out of your realm of reality, it's not usually the case. Usually it's just a well-developed, well-balanced physique that gives that illusion of size. And that's exactly what you want from a shoulder workout. This is the bad boy. This is the secret maker. This is your money maker that gives you that depth in front to back. It's super easy to build that front. It's a little bit harder to build the middle, but the back is often a big neglected issue. So if you look in the mirror and you find yourself looking a little bit like this, a little bit pronated, chances are that you're overworking that front delt, not engaging the scapula properly and not working the rear. So we're gonna to focus to create that delt illusion. Rear delts, scapula, control, mind to muscle, and making sure that we're working front to back. I hope this has been useful. If you've got any questions, hit me up in the comment section below. I do read them all and we will answer. Guys, if you see a question you know the answer to, feel free to help each other out. Don't forget to hit that like button. Notifications, drop down menu, make sure that you select to have it notified every time I upload a video. That way you won't miss anything. Other than that, thank you all for the support. Thanks for the love. I've been Lex and we'll catch you in the next one. We are out.